Speaking of Kiprasov's impact on the ice can be seen with countless highlight reel saves we've all become accustomed to seeing over time. Saves that helped him collect some hardware over the years, which we have here on display tonight for everyone to see. Nominated on three occasions, Kipper took home the Vesna Trophy during the 2005-2006 season as the NHL's top goaltender. Ten shutouts that season, along with the 42 wins that also put him in the Hart Trophy conversation. Along with the Vesna that season, Kipper captured the Williams Jennings Trophy as the goaltender with the lowest goals against average, 2.07. Mika would end his career as the franchise leader in that category, 2.48. And 20 years ago, Kipper, along with a couple of guys on the carpet next to me here, took the Flames to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final. And how about five shutouts during that run, including back-to-back -back in Games 5 and 6, to eliminate the powerhouse Detroit Red Wings in the second round. A 3-1 victory over the Sharks in game six, of course, sealed the Clarence Campbell Bowl as the Flames won the Western Conference. Among all of Mika's accomplishments on the ice, that run in 2004 launched him into a completely different stratosphere of popularity. But his biggest impact off the ice is the amount of kids who just suddenly wanted to play goalie just like him. To honor that legacy, we'd like to welcome a special group of goaltenders to the ice. Please direct your attention to the Zamboni entrance and join us in welcoming one goalie from each of the Calgary Hockey Calgary associations, all of them U11 age category, and born in Mika's final season as a flame, 2013. What better way to welcome our guest of honor than these amazing young goaltenders here on the ice tonight with us. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Please welcome back to the Sea of Red, number 34, Mika Kiprasov. Mika, welcome. It is truly an honor to have you here tonight. Uh, to kick things off, the Calgary Flames organization would like to present you with a few gifts to mark this occasion and show our appreciation for all that you've done for this city and for this team. On behalf of the Calgary Flames Foundation, we would like to welcome Chairman Jeff McKaig and Executive Director Candace Gowdy to present a $25,000 donation to the Children's Cottage Society on your behalf.
Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Candace. And for you and your family, Mika, we are proud to present you with something that's become uh, say, somewhat of a tradition around these ceremonies. The trick is it hasn't been made yet because we wanted to give you something to truly commemorate the evening. So we're happy to welcome back to the Sea of Red tonight, Canadian artist David Arrigo, who upon com uh, conclusion of the ceremony will begin painting a one-of-a-kind piece to dedicate tonight's banner raising ceremony that'll be presented to you and your family. We have a camera up on David all night long so we can track his progress throughout the evening, so no pressure, David. During his time with the Calgary Flames, Mika was also heavily involved in the Calgary community, donating his time and supporting several local charities. Even though Mika no longer resides in Calgary, his love and passion for this city is as strong as ever. And in an incredible display of generosity, and as a thank you to this city, and believe me, he didn't want anybody to talk about this, Mika is very graciously donating $34,000 to Calgary Minor Hockey here tonight. Thank you, Mika. And as part of this moment, on behalf of Calgary Minor Hockey, our 12 goalies would like to salute you one more time. All right, we know uh, Mika is a man of few words, uh, but there is one guy who isn't. He also happens to be a former teammate, his former goalie coach, and one of his best friends. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage to say a few words about Mika, Mr. Jamie McLennan. Thank you, Brandon. Good evening, everyone. I'm beyond honored to share this night with all of you to celebrate an amazing person and my friend who we all refer to as Kipper. I will say on a personal note, it's a little bit weird for me to be actually on the ice during a game or any type of amazing event. <laughs> for many years, I witnessed those happenings from that spot on the bench right there. So you have to excuse me if I'm caught up in the moment and soaking it all in of getting some attention while representing the Flames. This is definitely a first. <laughs> Mika Kiprasov, the man of mystery, the legend Kipper. From the moment I met him, I knew he was special. If I had to sum him up with one word, he was cool. To beginning the 03-04 season, the goalie tandem was Roman Turek and myself. And with Roman getting injured long-term early that season, and Daryl obviously not wanting to flush the season down the toilet, having to rely on me stopping pucks nightly. <laughs> he wisely traded for Mika, who had a history with, with him from San Jose, and promptly gave him the pathway to become, in my opinion, one of the greatest goaltenders in the history of the game. When Kipper walked into the room, I met him for the first time. He had this aura an energy about him that was, we all just gravitated to. His demeanor, that quiet energy, the way he carried himself in a humble but confident way made you just believe he had that it factor. And then watching him in practice and play, we knew it was another level. Witnessing up close and personal him becoming a star right before our eyes was inspirational. During that season, he seized the opportunity, took off, and never looked back leading that team to the Stanley Cup final, arguably the Stanley Cup championship. It was in. Jelly, you know it was in. But let's not focus. Let's not focus on that mishap. Let's focus on the brilliance of Kipper, and that's what it was. Kipper became a mainstay in the crease for nine years as one of the league's best. Seven straight years of 70 plus games a season was an unbelievable feat given how hard and physical the position is. Side note, I want to point out how lucky Flames fans are to have gone from Mike Vernon, 
an absolute legend, then to Mika, and then to Jacob and Danny. You've really been lucky to witness greatness for so many years between the pipes. Yes, there may have been a dud or two squeezed in there, the Jamie McLennans of the world, but the rare pain of having to suffer through a McLennan start was well worth watching those legends work for years. So that's still a great trade-off. I get asked all the time how Mika was able to play 70 games a season, year after year. Kipper was the ultimate pro. His preparation was second to none. But it was his unique preparation is what made him the best. Now, every athlete prepares differently. Most players are all about weights and cardio, muscle mass, stuff like that. You look at Iggy. Iggy was ripped. He had muscles everywhere. Even his eyebrow and his forehead had muscles. <laughs> Same with Robin. Robin was super buff, all jacked up with muscles that even spilled over to his ears. <laughs> Connie's tongue had muscles as well. He talked more than me, which was tough to do. With Kipper, it was what he needed to play 70 games a season. A lot of times I feel like people embellish stories over time. With Iggy, it was the shift. Over time, it became larger than life. When you hear the story now of that shift, it was five minutes long. He attacked their bench, slashed the coach, fought the mascot, had 10 guys on his back, and then helped Saprikin score that OT goal in game five of the cup final. Now, somewhere in my mind, I believe all of that happened just not in the 90 seconds of arguably Jerome's greatest work, which was brilliant. But when it comes to Kipper and the stories, they stay the same. He trained to be the best goalie in the world. And from a talent perspective, he was perfect. He was big, he had a great glove hand, unreal movement and flexibility, off the charts hockey sense, and reads calm and unflappable. He just was the perfect goaltender. He was known to stretch for hours to maintain his flexibility, we all witnessed it every day. He would be in the gym, in the spider web, in the splits, working at it. Guys would be icing, taping their sticks, showering, talking to the media, and heading home, and he'd still be stretching. I remember flying to Finland to train with him when I was the goalie coach, and I spent a week over there making sure he was on track for the upcoming season, also just continuing to build our relationship. One night, he took us out, we went for a nice dinner, a few drinks, and it might have been a little later than we wanted to, but no problem. Kipper was the ultimate professional. The next morning, he said, let's go for a bike ride. 40 minutes of cardio. I thought, wow, this guy's committed. So he comes out of the garage with a couple bikes, and we take off down the road to get our workout in. Now, the road has lots of twists and turns and a little bit of hills and valleys. And at the end, there was this big hill. So I was ultra-focused on trying to keep up with this highly-tuned athlete. The hill seemed to go on forever. I was working as hard as I could, standing up on the bike, trying to get this thing up the hill, sweating profusely. And near the top, Kipper just blows by me. And all I could think to myself is, God, this guy's dialed in an unbelievable shape. So as I lumber to get up to the top, he was waiting for me. I rode up, drenched in sweat, and I looked, and he did not have one drop of sweat on him. He wasn't even breathing heavy. He just had the smile on his face and said, mark me down for a 40-minute bike ride. And he started his moped up and drove away. <laughs> I guess I wasn't paying attention to the fact that he was driving an electric bike. So maybe his training wasn't that impeccable, but he certainly made it fun. And that was the sense of humor that made him the complete package. From starting a rumor in the room that Roman Hammerlick had stolen all the free t-shirts that Dion had laid out for the sponsor, by taking them and stuffing them into the arm of his coat and then promptly telling everybody, I saw Hammer do it. <laughs> to messing with Depot, the kingpin of trainers, who again started the rumor that he bought a guinea pig with one eye because it was half price. <laughs> We're on a two-game road trip one time and some guys they only bring one suit and a couple, shirt, couple shirts. And Jay Bowmeister's suit, his coat was just sitting there, so Kipper decided to rip one of the arms off of it. <laughs> so when we got onto the bus to fly out, Bo did not have a suit coat on, and he was glaring at me, telling me I owed him money. 
I had no idea what I was talking, or what he was talking about, because I didn't realize Kipper had told him he thought he saw me do it. <laughs> so re regardless of what was going on, he still was able to maintain that brilliance. I remember playing at Chicago one night, and Chicago was a serious rock star team. And they had this goal song by Chelsea Dagger. When the goal would go in, the crowd would be into it. You'd hear this, da 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 and the crowd would be just going nuts. So we had an off night. They tuned us up pretty good. And I want to say the score was like 7-1, something like that. It got ugly. They ran us out of the building that night. And it happened so that you get on the plane, no problem. Things are pretty quiet. Guys are pretty somber. And I walked back to Kipper's seat to check on him once we got airborne. And I asked him how he was doing. And with a little smile on his face, he just leaned over and said, da 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 <laughs> Right? <laughs> now, right then, I knew he was fine. Nothing ever bothered him. Good or bad, he always found the right balance. And that's what made him so brilliant all those years. It's been a great week here in Calgary, getting to spend time with so many old, old teammates and friends. And the Flames organization has really done a first-class job. Thank you so much. Now, over the course of the week, I've been asked so many times to single out one moment, one game, one save that best defines Kipper and his greatness. And I've come to realize it's just not possible. His career is best defined by his complete body of work. It's a combination of thousands of moments, thousands of saves, and so many games that just became routine for Mika, and we probably just took for granted. Sitting on the bench right over there, backing him up, I would envision myself in the net during the game, going through what he was going through, facing the shots, battling the traffic. I would analyze it, he would make a save, and I would chuckle to myself and say, that would have 100% gone in on me. <laughs> Too many times, actually, to count in my head, and the goal total would go up, and that of any normal goaltender in the net. But it wasn't a, no a normal goaltender in the net. And over time, we just became accustomed to a level of excellence, night in and night out, that he would deliver. Kipper, it's been an awesome career. I'm so proud to have been along for the ride. I just want to thank you and your family, Sadie, Aro, Oscar, Marco, Luca, for allowing me to be a part of it. I'm beyond honored to be your friend. Now, I better get out of here. My time's up, and I see Daryl's over there. I hate for him to have to pull me one last time from this ice surface. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Uh, tonight presents us with an opportunity to relive the moments and share the memories of those nine incredible seasons with number 34. And what better way to do that than enjoy those moments all together here tonight? Take a look. November 20th, 2003. Calgary Flames and the Montreal Canadiens. At that time, who knew how significant that game would turn out to be? All I knew is that to my right, from the Saddle Dome broadcast booth, was a 27-year-old Finnish goaltender about to make his Flames debut, appropriately wearing a blank mask. Because what did we really know about this guy, besides being third in line in a crowded San Jose crease? Mika Kiprasov was a total mystery, even to his new teammates. Seems hard to believe now, doesn't it? After everything he's done for the Calgary Flames and this city. Well, that night, I'm sure he had been eager to show what he could do. The legend of Kipper had its opening chapter. Shot, and Kiprasov knocks it away from the open. When Kipper showed up that fateful November night, the Flames, owners of a 7-8-2 record, were holding down last place in the Northwest Division. 
By Christmas, they were 18, 9, and 5. Second place. What a save by Mika Kiprasov. And when the Flames had the opportunity to clinch a playoff spot in game 80. Front of the net, there's a shot, great save by Kiprasov. To halt a lengthy years-long postseason drought, Kipper responded. Up, save, Kiprasov. With, what else? A shutout. And the crowd on their feet, listen to him. You can put it in the wind column. Playoff! Yeah! By posting a goals against average of 1.69, he shattered the NHL's modern day record. That spring, Kipper, along with the team's superstar winger, Jerome McGinley, put a team on their backs and dove a young generation of Flame fans headfirst into a sea of red, unlike anything we'd ever seen before. Dispatching three division winners. Stop by Kiprasov. Somehow can't beat Kiprasov. Linden. Oh, Kiprasov falling down the position, and he still gets it. Another huge, they score. A rebound, and it's Martin Jelena. Fred, oh, what a save by Kiprasov. shutouts in 26 games all the way to game seven of the Stanley Cup final those heroics signaled the arrival of Mika Kiprasov hardly anonymous anymore his mask was no longer a plain white instead he sported one decorated with skulls iconic and instantly recognizable as his. His popularity in this city skyrocketed, going well beyond the crease. There were stories about Calgary newborns being named Mika, more than a few pets being branded as Kipper. And who could forget the Kipper kid? One of the surest signs of his popularity, his influence. Calgary minor hockey became overwhelmed by the sheer volume of youngsters who very suddenly wanted to play goal, just like you know. Save me by Kiprasov! And the wonderful ride for Kipper in Calgary was only starting. Cue the next chapter. The, rebound, another save, Kiprasov. the team and its fans were treated to excellence for nearly a decade. Every night, almost literally. It's a shot, the glove save, Kiprasov! 74 appearances in 2005-2006. Then totals of 74, 76, 76, 73, 71, and 70. Richards is wrong! He will likely be the last NHL goalie to play in 70 or more games for seven straight seasons. Saved by Kiprasov! Through the seam, Hunwell, brought by Kiprasov! In addition to his shot-blocking wizardry, it was a mild-mannered personality that defined number 34. Kipper became almost mythical, ascending to a place in Flames lore few have ever achieved. As Kiprasov took that away from him. Stories of his legendary stretching regiment, sometimes for over three hours in one day. He created a mystique that only increased a city and fan base's love for him. When scored on, what would he do? Every time, calmly lift his mask, take a drink of water, then glide into the corner. There was never panic, never frustration, just a deep breath that somehow let everyone in the building know that things were going to be all right. And things here were all right for nine years. Statistical benchmarks steadily stacked up. Three times, Kipper was a finalist for the Vesna Trophy, winning the award as the NHL's top netminder in 2006. 
alongside the William Jennings Trophy for lowest goals against average. What a save by Mika Kiprasov! He owns the Flames franchise marks for games played by a goaltender with 576. For wins with 305. And for shutouts with 41. And save by Mika Kiprasov. Save percentage and goals against average owns those records too. He is second behind only Mike Vernon for playoff games played with 52 and wins with 24. Playoff shutouts leads that category with six. Speaking of shutouts, he was the first to have one in an NHL outdoor game. He holds the four single highest win totals in a season for the franchise. With the most being 45 in 2008, 2009. A feat matched only once in the NHL since. Oh, wow! A double stack! But what stands above all of that save. is the save. Another save, save. Kiprasov! So many saves. To be specific, 16,158 of them. Some of which even garnered their own nicknames. He got the scorpion. A little heel flick. Kiprasov kicks that out of midair. In front of the flame goal, another shot, that's blocked, another shot, oh, and it's saved by Kiprasov. Rock by Kiprasov, he got a paddle on it. You want to talk athleticism, you want to talk competing, watch Look that save. The reverse shot, Stoner wide, off the board, oh, a great save by Kiprasov, a diving stop. In front of the net, the shot, goal, save Kiprasov, what a save by Kiprasov. Shot tipped in front, loose. Those are the numbers in the record book. But another great number, 34. Worn by Flame fans since that fateful night in November of 2003. Giving a fan base a franchise-altering goaltender we could claim as our own. Sure, he may have been from a place far away, a home country he proudly represented on several occasions. But he was ours. And it always felt bigger when 34 started. The sight of that familiar goaltender skating towards the net with flaming skulls atop that red jersey, covered in spotlights, and that oh-so-familiar introduction from Beasley. Mika Kiprasa! With Kipper in the net, the Flames had a chance to win every single night. What a glove save by Kiprasa! And now, the final chapter. The number 34 will be forever immortalized with Mika Kiprasov becoming the last player to ever wear it. From now on, it will only be found on the backs of sweaters throughout the sea of red and in those amazing memories from nine unforgettable seasons. And he's robbed by Kiprasov! Tonight, it will climb to the Raptors, above the crease where so many games were decided. For a man who never blew his own horn, who never sought the spotlight, and who never craved credit, this honor says everything he won't. That Mika Kiprasov is one of the very best to ever play for the Calgary Flames. For your Calgary Flames, number 24, Mika You ready? 
It's about time we heard from the man of the hour. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome number 34, Mika Kiprasov. Thank you. This is such a huge honor, and it's not lost on me how unique and special this is. Thank you, fans. It was a privilege to play in front of you each and every night for nine amazing years. Thank you to the Flames organization and especially to Flames ownership group for this huge recognition. The players and our families were always treated in first class. Thank you. Thank you to the alumni and former teammates for being here tonight. I must thank Nudas for that great speech. Nudla, you were the best goalie partner I could have ever asked for. You have always been a great friend, and you always had my back. I also have to thank my good friend, Deepo, for always making sure my equipment was perfect and so much more. And Peter for making sure Iki and Kani handled the media instead of me. <laughs> I started my NHL career in San Jose and I was the third string behind two really good goalies. I could have been buried there if it wasn't for Daryl Sutter believing in me and giving me second chance here in Calgary. Daryl, I can't thank you enough. When I came to Calgary in November 2003, right away I felt welcomed by the fans. It, it didn't take long to realize that our locker room wasn't just full of good players, but great people. To name a few, our captain and leader, Cheryl McGinla. I don't think I need to tell you all how amazing player Iggy was. I think that there was only one thing he couldn't do, score on me during the practice. But seriously, Iki, it's a huge honor to have my name up there with yours. Next up is Craig Conroy. He was a great player on the ice and a great person off the ice. Connie is a really smart hockey guy, and I'm glad to see He's still doing great things with the Flames today. I'd like to mention Robin Recker and Red Warrener. Reggie and Retro were awesome teammates. The kind you go to battle with, the kind you always want on your side. A big reason why I'm standing here today is because of players like you too. My friend, Mike Vernon. I never had the chance to play with Vernie, and that's kind of a cute thing, because I never like to be a backup. <laughs> Vernie, your advice and support over the years meant a lot to me. It's so cool to have my name up there next to yours. <laughs> and
Another ambassador of our community is Lanny McDonald. I wish him a speedy recovery, and I wish he was here with us tonight. Lanny is a true legend. It's so special to have my family here with me tonight. My wife Sadie, my sons Aaron Oscar, brother Marco, and my nephew Luca. Thanks for all your support over the years. Thinking about my years in Calgary, meeting so many great people inside and outside of hockey. Nine years went by too fast, but it was the best nine years that my family and I will always remember. Thank you. Thank you, Mika. We now ask that uh, you and the family start to make your way over to the banner carpet, if you could. The time has come to direct your attention to the south end of the ice surface, where we will be raising a banner to the rafters of the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Officially retiring, Mika Kiprasov's number 34. Later this week, Mika's banner will be moved to join the other Calgary Flames banners where it will remain on permanent display. Mika, congratulations on an incredible career. Before we close out tonight's ceremony, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for attending tonight's festivities. And of course, thank you to Mika for giving us all so many unforgettable nights inside this very building. Beasley? If you would please indulge us one last time. Absolutely. See you, Brad. Make some noise for number 34, Mika.